Okay, distance learners, hi. We are going to get started on describing a distribution. If you haven't filled out this note sheet yet, stop and do that first. So if you haven't done this card stop, go back and do this card stop and then come back and watch this video on describing a distribution. And then just for everybody, again, quiz five is going to be on this information and you guys are taking quiz five on Wednesday, September 30th. Okay, so all of the distributions that are on this page are distributions that we have seen in class already. So this distribution is your um, stem plot that you needed to make on quiz four. So the very last question said, make a stem plot of the scores on a history test and split the stems. So the first thing that I always um, write down is the shape. And in order to see the shape on a stem and leaf plot, you need to turn it so that the stems are horizontal. And then if you like to, you can draw a curve. And I think if you draw a curve, it becomes very clear that this data or this distribution is skewed. Which direction is it skewed? Skewed to the left. So I'm going to turn my paper back over and say this distribution is skewed left with a potential outlier at what score do you think is an outlier? 40. So skewed left with a potential outlier at 40. Why do I think that 40 might be a potential outlier? Because there is a gap in the data from 40 to 56. That's a pretty large gap. So I'm thinking that 40 might be an outlier. Notice I have followed this cardstock. I have just done shape and outliers. You'll see as we go through and do these other distributions that it doesn't matter what order you go in. You don't have to do shape, outlier, center, spread in that exact order. You can do it in any order you like. Just make sure that you hit all four elements. Okay, next up. The median of the distribution, uh-oh. So I can see that I'm going to need to find the median and the IQR of this distribution. So I'm going to find the position of the median. This is not the median. This is where the median is. This is not the what. This is the where. So there are 36 observations. You do 36 plus one, divide by two, and that tells you that the position of the median is 18.5. This is not the median. And that should make sense to you because look at your quiz scores or test scores. None of them are as low as 18. So what this is telling you is that your median is between the 18th and 19th observation. So I go over to my stem plot. This is observation 1, 2, 3. This is observation 4, 5, 6. Observation 7 is a score of 65, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The 13th observation in the data set is a score of 70, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and it's in between this 18th observation and this 19th observation. A common answer that I saw on the quiz for what is the median was two. Family. 
Does that even make sense? No, nobody scored a two on this test. So it's not just the leaf. You have to include the stem. The median is 72. Another common answer that I saw was 72.5. I understand why you think that it's 72.5, but you have to be really clear on what you're looking at here. This is saying that your median is between the number 72 and 72. Is there a number in between those two values? No. So that means that the median is just 72. If you use the formula, you do 72 plus 72 divided by 2, and that also gives you 72. So the two biggest misconceptions that I saw on your quiz were that some of you guys were putting just 2, some of you guys put 72.5, and then some of you guys put the position of the median and not the actual median. Okay, the next thing that they want us to find is the quartiles. And remember, that's like finding the median twice. So we already found the median. And what this means is that there are 18 observations to the left of the median and 18 observations to the right of the median. If you didn't know that, you count them. There are 18 observations between my fingers. So if I want to find the position of quartile 1, I take 18 observations, I add 1, and I divide by 2. That's the formula that gives me the position. So what position is that? 9.5? So this is between the ninth and 10th observation, and you start at the 40. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm getting that it's between 67 and 67. So what does it have to be? 67. Okay, well, if it's between the ninth and the 10th observation to the left of the median, that means that it's between the ninth and 10th observation to the right of the median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 75, very good. Okay, well, why did I make us go through and calculate those because I peeked ahead in my written response and saw that I need to know what IQR is. So IQR is 75 minus 67. So what is that? Eight. Okay, so this distribution is skewed left with a potential outlier at 40. The median of the distribution is 72. So students typically scored 72 points on the history test. So this is center. This is center. And the reason that we care about the center is because it tells us what our typical observation looks like. So while you're writing that, I'll just briefly hop back to our socks paper. And this shortcut side says, if you have a skewed data set, you need to use the median for center. You don't use the mean. You need to use the median. 
Um, one other thing that I want to note is that I usually add context when I do the median, meaning I start being specific to the problem. I don't just say the median is 72. I say, so that means that students typically scored 72 points on the history test. Okay, so we did sh uh, shape, outlier, center, and the last thing is spread. We would like for our data to not be spread out. We want it to be all clustered around one value, but unfortunately, our data is pretty spread out because of this outlier. So he's skewed to the left and has this outlier that's pulling it toward the lower scores. So the data varies from 40 to 79 points. But we don't want to use range to describe this data. We want to use IQR, and that is also on the shortcut side of my card stop. I need to use IQR to describe spread. So the IQR is eight points. So notice on this data set that most of the data is from 65 and higher. Most kids scored 65 to 79. But because of this outlier, it makes your range very large. It makes it look like kids scored from 40 to 79 when really it was only 65 to 79. And this spread is best described by eight points. The range would be 39 points. So we don't use range. I'm gonna write that maybe right here. The range of this is 40, just kidding, 39. You take 79 minus 40. So if we use the range, it would look like our points our scores were all over the place, but really they're not. They're all clustered right here. So IQR definitely describes the spread of this data better. And then lastly, there is a gap in the distribution from 40 to 56. 40 to 56. Are you okay on this one? It seems like a lot because we had to go through and calculate all this information. But once you start doing it on your own, I think that you'll find that it's easier than what it feels like right now. So we did shape, outlier, center, spread. And then I highlighted that there was a gap. I could have set up here the distribution is skewed left with a gap from 40 to 56 and then potential outlier at 40. There's lots of different ways you can write it. Okay, next up, describe the distribution of the winning margins for the first 51 Super Bowl games. So these are the number of points the team won by. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six teams that won by four points, won the Super Bowl by four points. That's what this information is telling us. Now I wanted you to see why dot plots aren't always the best way to display your data. If I have to find the shape of this data, I on my dot plot, it kind of looks right skewed, but I'm not 100% sure. So I think that I would have a hard time saying what the shape of this data is. But if I look at the same data as a histogram, I can see that it is definitely right skewed. This is the same data, different graph. So seeing that, I feel comfortable saying that the distribution is right skewed. With a gap, and I'm going to go to the dot plot now. 
because it gives me actual values. Our gap is from 36 to 45 points. Okay, this wants us to once again go through, find the median quartile one, quartile three, and IQR. Do you want me to walk you through that or do you want to try it on your own? Okay, try it on your own. Find the median first and then find the quartiles. I'm going to mark mine on my paper and then walk around to see how you're doing. Okay, check in with me really quick just on the positions. So the position of the median is the 26th observation. So then if you don't know how many observations are to the left of the median, you count them. And if you count them, there are 25 observations to the left. So you do 25 plus one divided by two. That tells you that your 13th observation from the median in either direction are your quartiles. So I have a median of 12. I have a quartile one of four and a quartile three of 19. So you guys find, using those values, the IQR and the range. That will only take like 10 seconds. Okay, maybe 20. Ten. Five, three, two. Okay, what are you getting for IQR? 15 and range? Oh, for the range, you need your max value and your min value. So... Our maximum value was 45, and our minimum value was 1. So our range is 44. Speaking of range, really quick, we, if we look at this data, most of the data is between 0 and 20. Most teams won the Super Bowl by 0 to 20 points. So the IQR of 15 is a much better description than the range of 44. And the reason is because of this skew. Not very many teams won by more than 20 points. 
Okay, so the distribution is right skewed with a gap from 36 to 45 points. The median is 12. So the winning team typically won by about 12 points. So on average, if you're winning the Super Bowl, you're going to win by about 12 points or roughly two touchdowns. The winning margins vary from 1 to 45. You can say points there if you want. But the IQR is 15 points. So I'm noting the data is very spread out, but if you just look at the IQR, most of the data is within 15 points of each other. The winning margin of 45 points might be an outlier. Personally, to me, it does not look like an outlier on the histogram, but on the dot plot, I think on the dot plot, it looks much more like an outlier. Are we okay on this one? I'm gonna highlight the context on this just so that I keep bringing to your attention that you do wanna make sure that your information is specific to the graph where possible. Okay, we only have a couple more. This next one's quicker because notice down here, I'm actually giving you all of the, they're called summary statistics that we're interested in. So down here under the graph, all these words should sound familiar to you. N is our number of observations, gives you our mean, our standard deviation. That should be familiar, but not you shouldn't know what it is, you just should have heard of it. Min, quartile one, median, quartile three, max. So um, one thing that I want to highlight is histograms do not give you specific information about your data values. And for some of you guys, this was a huge issue on your quiz that you took. So I just want to make sure really quick that you guys know what these bars mean. So this bar down here means that one teacher, one teacher owned zero to three pairs of shoes. I'm just putting pairs. This first bar on the histogram is telling you one teacher owned zero to three pairs of shoes. Do I think it's zero? No, because you gotta wear shoes to teach. Do we know if it is one pair? Why am I saying three? Are you guys wondering that? <laughs> What's my bin size? Bin size three? Bin size is three. So this is zero to two. So we don't know if they owned one, we don't know if they owned two. It's pretty safe to say they didn't own zero. Why am I not including three? If this bar goes to three, why am I not including it? It goes in the next bin. So this guy is telling us that eight teachers own 
three to five pairs of shoes. We don't know the specific values though. We don't know if they're, if five of them owned three pairs and one of them owned five pairs. We have no specific information on this histogram. All we have is general information. Okay, so that's the first, the first thing that I want to highlight on this histogram that seemed a little bit unclear on your quiz. So now let's talk about the distribution. What is the shape of this distribution? I don't feel like I can, I don't feel great. I don't feel great about this shape. But I do think the one thing that I can say about this is I do think that this shape is bimodal. Remember, bimodal is when you have two peaks. I personally think that this is a very clear peak and this is a clear peak. So I'm going to mark where I think the different, I think that there's two different situations happening. This looks like its own distribution and this looks like its own distribution to me this looks like we had two histograms that we put together does that make a little bit of sense yes no i do not personally think that this bimodal distribution is symmetric i just think that it's bimodal now it can be both, like if you look on your socks page, it can be symmetric and bimodal. I think the only thing that we're safe to say here though is that this is a bimodal data set. So, okay, I ran out of space, so I don't, I don't know where it stopped. So hopefully it didn't stop too long ago. Um, we're on whether we're using the mean or the median, and I'm going to use both because they're very close together and I'm not sure which one to use. So hopefully that's where you left off. The mean of the distribution is 11 and the median of the distribution is 12. So teachers typically owned about 11 or 12 pairs of shoes. Or we could just say 11 to 12 pairs of shoes. Do you guys think there are any outliers? No, there does not appear to be any outliers. So this time I put the outliers all the way at the end. The one other thing that I want to highlight before we do the last um, histogram is why I think that this is two sets of data. I personally think that this is probably the male teachers and that this is probably the female teachers. Would that make sense to you? I, I think, especially for my generation, for the, the ages that most teachers are, it would make sense to me that the men owned way less shoes than the females did or the women did. I think your generation, it's probably pretty close. I think that sneakers are a way bigger deal than they were when I was your age. Okay, last one that we're doing together. Miles per gallon. So this is actually the stem and leaf plot that we made together with the decimals. So the first one where we actually had to use decimals, that's what this, of course it's not in here, that's what this data set is. So if you look at that data set, if I can find mine anytime this century. Oh, it was on our can you do, that's why I can't find it. It's this data set. So notice it has decimals. So I just took this data and entered it into the computer, and this is the histogram that I got. 
it's pretty close to the stem and leaf that we have on our page. So the first thing that I want to try to figure out is what is the bin size? Two. Your bin size on this is two. So what that means is that one car, because they looked at 50 cars, one car got from anywhere from 30 to 32 miles per gallon. Now, notice the symbols that I have on this set of numbers. What are the different symbols? What do they mean? Do you guys know? If you've taken math three, you should be kind of familiar. Aiden? It can be any number from 30 up to 32, but not 32. The square bracket means it can equal. The round bracket means it cannot equal. So this means it can be 30.5, 30.7, 31.2, 31.9, but it cannot get to 32 because 32 is in this bin and it goes to 34. You won't ever be tested specifically on that. So if that's troubling you, just try to do the best that you can. It's never gonna say what bin is 32 miles per hour in. You just need to kind of know what each bin, what the range for each bin is or what the data values vary by. Okay, so describe the distribution, but this time it's gonna be a little tougher because we have no specific information. Last time I gave us the summary statistics, but this time we get nothing. So the distribution, I think that this guy is roughly symmetric. The median. So this is what most of the questions on your quiz were addressing. So position of median. This tells us that 50 cars are included on this graph. If it didn't tell us that, what you would need to do is figure out how many cars were in each bin and add them up. So this is, this tall one is 20, I think. The one to the left is seven. I think this one is four. I think this one is one. So you would go through all of the bars, find out how many cars was in each bar, and add them up if it didn't tell you right here that there were 50 cars. So this tells me that the position of the median is the 20 is 25.5. So that means it's between the 25th and 26th observation. On the quiz, what lots of people were doing was finding the center of the x-axis. But what you need to do is actually figure out what bin is the 25th and 26th observation in. So the first observation is in the 30 bin. Then the second, third, fourth, and fifth observations are in the 32 bin. From there, the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, nope, just 12th observation is in the 34 bin. Which means that the 25th and 26th observation has to be in the 30 six to 38 bin. This bin holds the 26th, sorry, the 25th and 26th observations. So the median of the distribution is 36 
to 38 miles per gallon. I included 38 this time because it can be a decimal. If you feel better using the symbols, use the symbols. You can use a square bracket and a round parenthesis. So these cars typically got 36 to 38 miles per gallon. We don't have to find IQR because this data set is symmetric. So we don't have to use IQR on this. The data varies from 30 to 44. With most of the data from 34 to, how far would you guys go? So I started at 34. How high would you go to describe most of the data? I think 42. I think most of the data is between 34 and 42. That last part is optional. This part, you don't have to write that. Writing that the data varies from 30 to 44 is enough. I just thought that it was very clear that most of the data was within this section. Do we think that there are outliers? No. There does not appear to be any outliers. So if you get a histogram and only a histogram, you're going to have to give a range of values instead of specific values. So the last one we're not doing, it is actually, can you do number four? It's on the front page of your can you do for this section. Let me grab one so I can write on it. So if you go to the can you do for this lesson, this is number four. It's about the agility test for fourth grade children. And we actually talked about this before your quiz last time because you guys had a lot of really good questions. So this is our agility test. The fourth grade children jump from side to side across a set of parallel lines, counting the number of lines they clear in 30 seconds. The histogram is a display of their scores. Describe the distribution. These are all the same data set. What is the bin size on this very first one? 10. That is not a great bin size. I wouldn't even know what shape to call this. This to me has no shape. So then I thought, well, what does a bin size of five look like? And this is the one that is on your page. And we talked about last time how I personally think that this is roughly symmetric. And that this guy right here is an outlier. And then the question was, well, how can you tell? How do you know that that is not skewed towards the outlier? And we discussed how if this were skewed, it would look like steps. You would have some bars leading you down toward that outlier. So if I do a bin size, this time the bin size is four. I feel a lot better about this data set being roughly symmetric. And personally, I think the bin size of three is the best size. I think that a bin size of three 
does the best to show the shape of this data set, which is approximately or roughly symmetric. And this guy is probably an outlier. This last one is a bin size of two. And I mostly included him just to show you what changing your bin size will do to a histogram. Are you okay on this one? So what you'll say on number four is this distribution is roughly symmetric with an outlier at 50 to 55. Then you'll find the center and then you can find the range, you could say the data ranges from 10 to 55, but most of the data is between 10 and 30. Okay, there's one, maybe two things. Turn the page, just lift this page up and look at 83. This wants you to answer a question about the income of college graduates. And I think it's really hard to do this problem without knowing that income is right skewed. In almost all cases, no matter who you are talking about, income has a right skew. So most of us, most of the population is right here. I'm in this area. And then some of the population is here. This is probably like doctors, lawyers, who else makes a lot of money? Computers, tech. And then all this is like Kardashian, Gates, Buffett, all the football players ever in the world. So data, or sorry, income is right skewed. Most of us make over here, but then there are some of us that make so much money, it skews the incomes to the right-hand side. So use that information to answer the question. Then flip, just grab the whole packet and flip it so you can see this multiple choice question number 72. This is telling you that house prices in Florida range, most of them are between 200 and 500, but then some of them are 15 million. If you wanted to see what that looked like, you could just use a scale of one. So this would be 100,000, 200,000, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900,000. This would be 1 million. Is that making a little bit of sense what's happening there? Yes, no? So then you could draw it for yourself. Like, okay, well, most of the houses are in this area, but then I got a few houses that are out here in this area. That's what this problem is telling you. So once you get there, I think that that description will help. And then the last thing I'll highlight before you have the rest of the period is that if you're confused, like if you're thinking, can a distribution be symmetric and bimodal? You come to this page and check. Can a distribution be symmetric and multimodal? Come and check. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Okay. Um, so for, for your homework in the rest of the period, you're gonna try to get your can you do done and watch solutions. Quiz five is next time.